would it become a release goal to include the CDDs, what you said? Well, also CDDs, but just to say you want a release goal that it's that other package can be automatically configured by other packages out there. No, it's much too broad. Not okay. every package that you use. Okay, that a certain amount of packages can be auto configured by other packages without making the auto packages policy conflicting. I don't think it was a very good response. Well, that's not when you say exactly these packages or whatever. What, what is the. Why, why would the release team want to manage this? It's, it's, it's a CDD thing. CDDs should manage it. Yeah, yeah but, it's, it's but, but the release, we don't really manage the discourse. Okay, what is that? I was saying, what about the Strictly, as you say, the base install, because that's at yeah. Google we do fully automated installs, and we frequently run into the sub dev comp you need to do too many different overrides, they only need to be disabled different ways, and there's still the base packages, the things that are often configured by dev comp are the very fundamental packages, and they're often difficult to override and keep them from ever asking a question, which is something that you often want in your custom distribution is that you've already answered those questions. Yeah, but, yeah the, but the packages that actually accept dev code preceding are not the problem because they are fixed already. It's the packages that do not accept preceding that is the problem. Well, that's the source of that problem. Are, hmm? Even precedes aren't all that solid. They tend to um, forget and then they reconfigure later on. Well, sure, but that's a bug in the packet. That's a well known bug in the packet. I find that the case that when we install a package, Instead of looking for that conf on the right answer, is try to see the environment of the machine to find the best answer for a question. Find the uh, XML server. Instead of he didn't uh, accept from that conf those name of the machine, he looked through files inside it, uh, slash etc. Right. to write to, for the right answer. So for me to reconfigure the XML, I had to First, change the files, and then I could reconfigure the exam. Right. Okay, that's actually correct because the dev database is not the authoritative source of information. It's only if it's not on disk, it's supposed to use dev values. And of course, when you want to precede it, and it still uses the, some other value from disk, it's a problem. No, the problem is when I try to find the Preset file to auto configure package. You don't know what questions you will take from the preset, what questions the package will fetch from the environment to yeah. find the right, right answers. Little problem. Yeah, you have to look at the constants for that. But sometimes well, it's not easy to, to read. No, that's right. That's, that's why you have debugging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think this problem is basically. Um, no, nobody has ever said that, that creating a CVD is always totally easy. You, you really have to look at what you're trying to customize uh, to, to, to figure out what you need to do for it. In my case, I'm not trying to do a CVD, I just try to install a machine on most of my clips possible yeah. and uh, in future upgrade my configuration, not all the servers to be the same what I'm doing. I'm using preceding and after that I'm using scripts to sh change the configuration files. And, and so my some more I'm interested what, what you can get from CDD on Debian because I can recycle some of the things from my from my software. Um, <coughs> we also have we modified Debian installer. Um, so we created two UDEPs, um, which modify the way Debian installer works. Um, we ask all the questions in the beginning, and um, then at the end of the install, we modify the configuration files as discussed. And we have four main profiles to select what kind of installation, um, so we don't have the usual <coughs> um, Debian tasks. Um, this is more information. Um, and at the moment we have our own CD and we would, of course, if we are completely in Debian, we still need our own CD. 
Um, and I was thinking Debian has this GNOME KDE and XFCE flavors. Should be just another flavor. And um, Debian EDU, as the special case, is also not any other custom Debian distribution, but it's an official Debian sub project. Um, so I don't think I talked briefly this once about the space issue on um, CD image. I would say that it would only need. At th we have three architectures, which is three CDs and a DVD. So it's six gigabyte more, adding to the hundreds or 150 gigabyte there are. I don't see any other issues to, feed, um, to create the CD. Um, there, there is no issue. The only thing is that you cannot say every CDD has a right to put any CDs they would like on CD image Debian org. Yeah. Uh, that's ask the question. Yeah, sure. um, I also think that CDDs should probably be optional for mirrors of CDD image org. So they would have to end up in a separate subdirectory or, or so on uh, that the mirrors can choose to either mirror or not. So it, it should, re in my opinion, it should not be in the same directory as where the Debian official images reside. Because a CDD is not Debian. It's still, uh, it has a specific purpose, it has a completely different audience. I'm, I'm, I don't agree. Uh, oh, that's sure, that's yeah. my opinion what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. But, but uh, I think we found the definition that CDD is Debian, but for a special user group, and it is complete Debian, and so I'm in much favor of this variant. We have uh, one flavor of GNOME, KDE, XFCE, and others. The only problem I have with that is if, if I look at it from a, a random user, yeah. okay, I'm going to a directory uh, where the Debian CDs are, Debian CD images, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I find a Debian Met CD there. Yeah. How do I know I do not want it? <laughs> Without first going to... It shouldn't be so different than CD because uh, it is still Debian. Yeah. It's, it's the same if you install it now, now Debian, and I don't want GNOME, but this is what I get by default. Yeah, but uh, regularly the user doesn't want medical software. And also, in your case, it's, it's three CDs, but I think a lot of other CDDs will have sets of two, three, four, whatever. No, no. Uh, yeah. 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 My, my people who... My goal is that uh, it's something that also relates to release. I think that uh, image that must be found on CD image should be released at the same time. So if the CDD is not coordinated with you know, the major or the end release, it should not be in the CD image. At least not in the same version. Yeah. I, I have no problem with it being on CDD. Yeah, actually, I think there are, well, of course, there are good reasons to say it should be on CD image that will work. I, I think in the outcome I agree with that it should be on the server. But I also think we already have now a lot of space issues on the mirrors. Not as, as bad on CD image itself, but on the mirrors. It's quite bad. And I really expect, why should we give uh, Debian EDU more privileges than uh, another C uh, Debian uh, CDD? Do you have any, any other perspective CDD? That's oh, Debian Matt. So please let me finish. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's besides the point. Might I just finish? Uh, thank you. So, what I really think is that we, that we, we, should, we, should, we, should, we should really say we could put it up on CD image, provided the admins they agree, but it shouldn't be in the main directory, because what is the main directory I really want to have released exactly on Edge or exactly on Lenny. So, if we do the release, it's a lot, a lot of effort to be able to push the, the, the images on the exactly same date to all mirrors, which needs to be coordinated, and which gets more complicated, which every one more image. So, if this is not in that directory, and in another directory, why not? It sounds like a good idea. I, I agree not having whatever in the end 20 CDDs in one directory and the user gets completely confused. One CDD plus the three uh, standard ones in one directory, which yeah. is really bad because user would say, hey, in which one should I download to install what is a normal Debian? But I, um, regarding the, the the release process, I think this is then the job of Debian EDU to make sure that when Debian releases, our packages are ready and can be released with them. Otherwise, yeah. we'll fail again 
and we'll still need our own archive. I, I, I would make that, even if you say it should be released at the same time, what I would like very much. Uh, it's a different if you say, well, we need to prepare all the media so that it makes the process of life in the media longer and Steve even can have uh, lesser sleep cycles, uh, Steve McIntyre that is, or if you say, well, we release on the same day, but the CDs will be built uh, approximately a week later, which is probably not too bad for you. But okay. if we have a, a certain download, I would say download madness, uh, at the moment that the release announcement is out, all the people will start downloading Debian CDs and DVDs. And so the main series DVDs need to be available at that time on all mirrors. And I don't think that we need the, C uh, the CDs, uh, DVDs, D uh, CDs on the same day, but say one week later is not an issue, I hope. I, I also think that could, it could be another step, because we, we have at the moment we have our own repository, we have on our building walls, we have on our own CD image server. Mm -hmm. Just getting rid of the own packages, which are different from them, it would be a <coughs> great huge step for us. But uh, one one question: uh, If you talk about uh, was this medical software, there is no 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 single medical uh, software outside Debian. We, we, the, the package are completely the same. It's just uh, a different right, uh, selection of packages. Yeah, no, so no, we, we do not add uh, anything. No, but if you are going to have a separate first CD. No, I just would not, would not like a separate, but just an, an, an item to select in the in the start. Just some pre-configuration for for the package selection. Okay, but that's and nothing else. That, that's completely different from the Debian Edu case. Debian well, Edu wants separate CDs. One yeah, but but uh, if I understand this uh, case correctly, it it's, uh, should not necessarily be. For Debian Edu, I think we, we might also want to modify now the way we modify um, Debian installer that we have the questions in the beginning yes. is okay. also something Debian yes. installer wants. Okay, I guess. Yes. No, why we, not? We have discussed it, and uh, because we need to read information that only becomes available later, so the questions that are asked later at the moment cannot be asked early because we need information that's only available at that point of time. What is it? Okay. That depends on uh, the question that's asked. Well, the only question we are moving forward is the popularity contest question. Mm -hmm. The reason that that is asked in uh, where it is is because we just asked the question of the package itself. Yeah. It's not a question in that mm -hmm. installer. It's a question in uh, Popcorn. I know, but it's interrupting the installation quite a bit. You have like done no, the partition partitioning and it's like doing that for a few minutes and then it pops up with a question. But we don't want to duplicate questions. That, that's bad design. Could we perhaps open the... Could you? Oh. Um, the other thing, do we have um, support for multiple um, Debian, like UDEM repositories in Debian installer? No? No. Okay. Because that, that could also truly benefit uh, CDD because yes. they will enable um, to use uh, standard netboot install to actually install a CDD by just pointing at a different um, UDEM repository or adding mm -hmm. one or more. Um, um, yeah. You open the code is completely yeah. yes. so. um, like a I have complaints from people watching the streams that say it's so too dark. <laughs> what I just realized was this, what the way we modify Debian installer, which is just bring that upstream to Debian installer. Well, part of it is not too simple to look at the normal installer. The way we modify the installer is by installing one extra user which pulls in a few dependencies and we order the installation system to ask our question first and then go ahead and install the system and then run the LTSP installer. Yeah, but that also means that you want LTSP to be on the first CD, which is not common. Not common. Well, maybe, so but it's like, what is it, okay? Yeah, but just LTSP is only an example, I don't know what else you have on the first CD that's not on the regular first CD. Well, so it my, point, my point is that you don't really need much on this first CD if you get the rest of the net. No, that's correct. 
Yeah. But you only you need that first you that the DBNU yeah. install you that has to be there to be selected and installed. And then it just takes over and automates the installation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And having something like uh, install Debian edu or edu enable or edu is true or something, that would not be a, a, a major issue. Yeah. All it had to do was like install the extra good that, uh -huh. that would. Yeah. You could even do it by uh, install components is Debian edu. In a normal Debian installer? Yes. Yes. Actually, I did that and it worked. Uh -huh. Yes, it's supposed to. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> So there, there's a, a, a lot, I think the main issue is um, the, the question if you want separate CD sets, I don't really care how big they are, but my personal opinion would be they do not belong in the Debian directory because they will confuse people and uh, because it's for uh, completely different targets on the Debian and because you cannot force something like that on all mirrors, it, it's just not uh, I don't think it's reasonable. Yeah, I, th I tend to agree. I think they should have a Debian EDU directory. Subdirectory, yes. Well, and a directory. Or or whatever, whatever, yes. um, the second thing is that if you can just go with the regular CDs or not, depends on the amount of customization you want to do or need to do. And uh, if you actually want to be able to install fully from CD or not, if, if you want to reorder the way things are on CDs, you're talking about uh, custom images and... Mm -hmm. yeah, we so gave up the CD. Mm -hmm. The CDs now has to be network installable. Uh, we still stick on the DVD. Okay. Actually, yeah. 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 Well, as I say, uh, for, for, from an ex management point of view, I have absolutely no problem with a simple boot option. Uh, right. And, and, and the and in install EDU. Yes. That just and, and including the UDAP on, on, on the CD is, is, is minor. Right. And you can even add your popcorn question inside your own UDAP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think actually that should be done by the default installer. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> because all the questions should be asked in a sequence up front and then it should just go ahead and do its work. Okay. Well, you can start a discussion on the Debian boot list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for us. We're speeding up the human time spent on in in store. If you can make sure that you do everything human interaction up front, that's a lot better. No. <laughs> Why, not? Why do you want to be interrupted while it's running? As I say, it's, it doesn't make sense to duplicate things uh, just to achieve that. You also just want to do an. Uh, 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 a natural insulation order. Just, just, I don't think it's a major goal. An insulation takes only 15 minutes. What, what, what's the problem? What is duplicated? I did not understand the problem. The, the, the problem is if you want the popcorn question asked first, yes. or any other question that's yes. asked during mm -hmm. package installation, regular package installation, okay. yeah. you would have to duplicate that template inside Debian installer with all translations and so on. In, uh, increasing the memory requirements of the installer effectively. Um, and of course, maintaining and, and, them separately. And then you would have to make sure that the answer to that question is propagated to yes. the installed system yes. at the proper time. So, and it's you have to keep the question in sync with the package. If yes. That happens. Yes. So, it's <laughs> from my point of view, it's nonsense. Well, well it is actually, work, but from a human interface point of view, it is actually important to get rid of all the interaction up front and then you can do the installation. If you have a question every three minutes, it doesn't take 15 minutes, even if it's like one question every minute and if you answer it there and then, it is 15 minutes. It's like three minutes plus two minutes to discover it, then you have five minutes and you answer the question and then you go away and you come back three minutes later and discover that the question hasn't arrived yet. So you go away for five minutes, and come back and then the question is there. That's why we have preceding. And, and also, like, there's a lot of questions that you don't know that they're going to be asked before, like, you know, there will be like, other questions that have been answered before. Yeah. So, like, 
you know, it's, it, that it's technically feasible, but it's going to be hell to maintain. But uh, it's, it's... Well, sure, I know. Uh, um, are you planning to lead the DI team? I don't know, but we are already doing some of it, and it is painful to maintain. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, we know this. <laughs> but also, still, we want to press the main to the I mean, you can do it for a small subset of Debian, I think. Yeah. For a CD, it fits. Uh, for the whole Debian, we will have three seeding. You can, you know, if you, if you actually change the, the dev count priority uh, for the classical installer, you get asked a ton of questions during the uh, default package set installed. Sure, then you ask uh, questions. And, and, you know, um, how could you know, like, which priority would be set up? And so you could actually ask all the questions before. Um, it's, it's, it's not I don't more think of a question, it's one question which isn't every installed. Yeah, you don't have to solve every problem, but you can solve quite a lot of problems by moving that question. Uh, since we are, uh, we are at the DI and the, the CD topic still, um, just a, a question I had. Is there any CDDs that uh, actually uh, create a live CD? Something similar? Not yet. We've tried. Poker has tried to get the live CD going. I'm not sure how far it has gone. Maybe who has one? Who mm -hmm. has one? It's just built manually at the moment. I'm working on the automatic build of it. But yeah, it doesn't include the package that it should. Yeah, but my it boots and it's a desktop kind of. Boots. My my live CD live CD which is automated with live helper, which is the talk of parallel, is broken at the moment because it's too busy. But there are. Custom handmade um, live CDs for that Edu available. I, I want to um, <coughs> get a bit more into that and see uh, uh, how far you can combine it. Uh, so you only have to distribute one one disk image. Live CD which is also it's all so yeah. I, like Ubuntu but with real depths on it. You should talk to uh, Octavio and Daniel Bauman. They're yeah, working on that at the moment. Yesterday. Yeah. From my point of view, this problem is done. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to, I think, to, to summarize the problem and to find some answers. And I'm happy about it. Uh, just a clarify, kind of is it planned that we um, go install a way of Ubuntu to have live CD installer on one uh, CD, or is it? Not I have no idea. No. So you have no it's, idea it's, that no. It, it, it's basically a separate project at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and I, I have no idea how it will end mm. up. Debian in life, you mean? Yes. yes. Well, but I mean, the, the idea of, of the Ubuntu people is uh, having a live city booting up, seeing mm -hmm. whether it works or and then install it. So, mm -hmm. well, I, for I'm the desktop? Really, for the desktop, yes. I'm, I'm not really uh, know what I think I should think about it. It can be done with Debian Live at the moment. Um, it, Debian Live has one of the three goals Debian Live has is not to be an installer, <laughs> but they provide installation scripts since almost the beginning. Mm. Because it's just you need to uh, partition the hard drive and copy the live image to the hard drive mm. and make the hard drive bootable. That's all. This can be done in a 20 line shell script. <coughs> so it's, it's there. So that you, yeah, it's, it's 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 useful for live CDs, for example, to delete user share doc, which you don't really want to do as an installer, but to gain space, many live CDs do that. Mm. But it's not. If you don't do that, then you can just copy it from the live CD. Do they leave the, leave the copyright files when they do that? <laughs> Actually, I only know this from the Fedora 7 beta CDs, and they just did RM minus F. But that was beta. I don't know how Fedora 7 mm -hmm. final ended up doing. Well, you could, you could first copy them to a separate page. Yeah, of course. We'll find it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Are there any others that have questions or remarks? Or how many CDDs are actually represented there? Debian need you obviously, Met obviously, many more. What CDD? Um, well, well, 
we do lots of customization inside Google, but they're not published, so they're not Why? <laughs> but you are kind of unofficial CDD in any? Well, we, we run into a lot of the same sort of issues. We need to pre-configure everything, and we do installs that are fully automated. So we run into, for instance, LDAP. It's a typical one. There are pre-seeds that you can put in for LDAP, but they can't generate the configuration file we actually need. Yeah. So we end up trying to wedge DevConf so that it won't try to overwrite the file that mm -hmm. we're then going to substitute in. And um, particularly with pre-seeding, every file has to be wedge and convert in some other different way and we start building up these tables on our internal wiki of what we had to do for this file. It would be really handy to have one way to, to wedge them and get rid of that. Is it something that you will see as a benefit, even contributing back to free software and tailor these things out with using engineering hours to the free guys? And I think it would. Yeah. yeah it so. Is, so so one thing I wanted to do was you know, suggest what do people think about that coming up with standard ways to wedge the DevConf system so that it won't write to configuration files. So that you can then write over them some other way. I believe that's the wrong approach. I think the uh, multi-level uh, configuration method is the better way. Mm -hmm. Where the packet has its configuration file and you get to provide your own configuration file and the program will select your file instead of the packet file, if you want to. Mm -hmm. So then you have two different paths, and you don't have any conflicts when you upgrade, and there's like two completely separate files. You modify one, packet modifies the other, and they will, never, they will never cross each other. Can you think of any packages in Debian right now that are already using a multi-level computer? Yes, XM4. Like XM4? KE? KE? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's why I haven't seen it. Yeah. So what we are actually asking for is that we, we, everybody of us hits into this problem in some level or another in different services or in user programs. And if we could maybe use a bit more time on it to make it up running, we will, because what's actually happened is the same you, you, you exemplify is that and we have schools and they do upgrade kind of a three, four services breaks, maybe some end user programs. And then actually what's happened is that the schools maybe suggest to go back to Windows. Uh, from our part of view that has a policy on getting people going for, for free software. It's kind of, oh, you sold us this cool product and when we upgrade with AppGet then everything should work. It really breaks and what should we do? Because they are blind. So this is our kind of use case scenario that we want to to uh, to, to target. So if you can, my question is still because you're doing all this in-house work, we mm -hmm. have some suggested strategies to solve this, mm -hmm. and my, I'm actually have a plea on: Are you going to put some engineering hour together with our guys and, and fix this for everyone? Well, we have been right. Mostly, we're just trying to keep our own heads above water. Okay, um, but we have a large body of things we've had to do as workarounds. Yes. And a lot of that can be fed back to the outside world. It's, you know, how do you how do you make LDAP not configure? Yes. You know, yeah. Not run the DevCon. And I guess you modify LSS PAM as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we do lots of little modifications. Yeah. Like that. And you know, the biggest problem we have for automating the installers is the DevConf system. Conf files are easy to wedge. You depackage, divert the file, and now everything goes and modifies the diverted file and you don't have to worry about what it's doing, you can just put your file on. Well, DevConf doesn't follow the diversions. <laughs> diversions is not supposed to handle DevConf files. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're supp supposed to have either DevConf or diversions, but not both. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, if you do that, you are not guaranteed to have it. Well, it would know, be nice if there were a way yeah. we knew we could do this. And there Absolutely. isn't. It's every file. You have to go in and read the post ins and figure out what it's trying to do and how you can wedge it. And some of them end up just being races, which really sucks. Yeah. But if you say uh, multi level configuration, isn't, wouldn't it be nice if we think we just make a tree, etc., CDD, and copy every uh, or, or symlink to every uh, config file for the moment and then put uh, our own configuration file in this place? and just find a, a common method to, to find these multi-level configuration files. That might be a good approach to make it easier for package maintainers to implement it. Yeah, then package maintainers just only have the upstream to uh, source to this common place, etc, cdd, yeah. and you have only one cdd installed on your box, 
and you can find this well, this an assumption which is not always true because I've heard about people who want to install Debian EU and Debian Junior, but I don't know if this is a practical case. Right. And it's, uh, well. But I also think that two levels is not enough all the time because yeah. at the university we have like slash, slash local with the, the university wide stuff and slash site for the local department wide stuff. And then you have the ETC for the machine specific stuff. Mm -hmm. And you need to handle all of this. Mm -hmm. So for KD, you can add as many levels as you want uh, by <laughs> inserting uh, values into the KD leader's environment variable. And that's very nice because you can, at runtime, when the user log in, check if he's a member of any group or if if some directory should be enabled because the machine is of a specific type and then it's added to the environment variable and the configuration is in that directory it will be used by KD. So I wish all programs would behave like that. That's fairly optimistic, you know. I know. Uh, the thing, the, the, uh, to sum it up, uh, I'm just asking you to get together more time, so maybe join us at the uh, Debian EDU developer gathering mm -hmm. and, and do engineering work here, very practical, not political, mm -hmm. get your ass out on the airport and get over to Norway or some of in Spain, whatever, <laughs> and be there and help out mm -hmm. to this. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on a few of your lists of yeah. and posted suggestions and things like that, but yeah. we haven't exported very much yet. And the other part is that we have uh, some logistical effort, but I know that Extremadura is very interested in similar things. So, and we're going to probably have more developer gatherings down in Spain. So, if you're going to get more some time than you already get, maybe from yeah, California. Well, there are a couple of things yeah. we can do just logistically. We yes. can use our video conferencing system. So, if you have people in Spain and California who want to talk, yeah. you can send an email to you know, Debian mm -hmm. at google.com and find some of the local Debian developers who are in both offices and they'll get you connected. Can you, know, you get video in Google's com working with Ganesh? <laughs> it has to be from one Google office to another. Hmm? You can work at the Google office, you're actually yeah, saying. You can, can use your Google facility. Well, my Google point office. is that the video yeah. Google Com videos only play with the oh, video player. <laughs> 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 in, player in player with enough, enough libraries yeah. can play those. It's pretty irritating. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's one of those big... I'll put that one in. <laughs> There's a package on Debian client which you can download from Google Video. But, you know, I, I'm trying to get hold of him, get in. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking about uh, M player and uh, uh, kind of, it, I know that Pepper is not this. I love it too. But, but it seems that we can do something together to yeah. sum it up. Mm -hmm. And you can actually attend, or maybe uh, we have a video conference. Mm -hmm. You have uh, locations that we maybe could do something sometimes, a weekend maybe sneak uh, and misuse your office space? Well, it's not even a misuse. I've been invited to do this by my manager. Okay. So, <laughs> so here we have some So the Trondheim's here. office is free for uh, yeah, school so we, yeah. Yeah. New York, Mountain View, Santa Monica, Phoenix. Um, Trondheim. I know the guy. Yeah, I know the guy. I can so promise you we will get a yes both from Google and Telenor in Norway. In yeah, well, that's a no brainer. Is there any place outside the United States? Because like Google wants to give the fingerprints. Yeah, Okay. Then we have a we have a deal so far. Yeah. Thank you. So good. Then over ten player, please. So no one, no one else doing custom Debian distribution, no one doing uh, Debian GIS distributions, Debian Java distributions. Yeah. I, um, I've heard from the Debian GIS people that they should again work on the on the C D but not for a long time. Yeah, there are two people at the moment, so two people yeah. I hope that something will start with the, with the scientific stuff and um, for this purpose we'll go to Amia to people software meeting. It's in the mid of July and there uh, should be some science oriented data people. Hopefully. Great. Great. But I say hopefully. <coughs> 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 
<coughs> because I'm afraid there are not so many people who <coughs> actually do work. It's a lot easier to talk. Yeah, talk is really fun. <laughs> Yeah, I can share some experience about CDD, how to make a private thing. Um, rep, rep, <coughs> rep, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very nice tool uh, to have a custom um, package repository because you can actually um, maintain uh, multiple fil to filters to aggregate packages to, from multiple sources um, so that you can actually have you know, um, packages from edge, packages from a civil, packages from backport and selecting like filter that fil filter filters and with I don't know, shell scripts or just a plain list. Uh, you can also install new packages in that very same directory and they're like you can make them in a staging area, area to it's quite nice tool to make a CDD actually um, if you want to have your own repository. Um, also, like um, one of the issues I had with the Debian installer is now fixed, which means that I had at some point to insert uh, UDEP that I has to run something during the install. And that I had to install um, to install that precise UDEP at a specific position in the menu, and there was no room uh, to, to put that because I had, I had to put it in between 33 and 34, and yeah, I was stuck. Um, so this is changed now. We have like uh, every standard menu item in the PD installer has three digits, and the last one is a zero or four. Two oh. digits, okay, so you can actually uh, put your very own. Um, Menu item anywhere you want. Uh, Actually, you could trick the old one to further on that problem. <coughs> I had I had to uh, I had to make a custom package actually to reorder the items. I had yeah. no choice. I tried. What we did in Debian EU was to provide one uh, meta packet with uh, a very low uh, menu number, depending on the sequence of packages we wanted to uh, to use, and then the menu would be reordered. Using that sequence. sequence. It's dark, but <laughs> yeah. I discovered okay. by accident that it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> it, was totally, it wasn't designed for that. It was just an amazing coincidence. The, oh. the check is only in now. The, the ordering of the menu is first by dependency yeah. and only then by menu number if there's uh, things at the same level. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, from that point, David Luby chose to use Duck so that people can use learn Duck to, um, to be to, to work on the Debian architecture maybe so that especially choose not the easy way <laughs> but the other way. Well, we we had the very easy way using CP and MV to maintain the archive. Before, oh, yeah. But that was a bit hard to maintain, so we decided to switch. And we did consider re repro, but it was. Well, it could have probably worked, but we did went for that way because it we want experience with that. It's really much you on a repertoire which was not maybe the case when you have uh, made that choice. Yeah. And another, another last thing I want to, to share is um, I hate meta packages, uh, <laughs> really. I mean, if you do a CDD, the, the, the Easiest way you add actually a bunch of you know specific set of packages right now is to make a big um, meta package uh, that gets installed with the system. But uh, if at any time the system administrator gets rid of one of the dependencies, the uh, meta package gets removed as well, mm -hmm. and that's a problem uh, in my opinion because next up, uh, upgrade it will miss all the new package you will have to have uh, added to um, the custom distribu distribution. So I have plans to uh, use dev tags uh, to, to write something that could overcome this issue. But we use one 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 one. Have, have you checked uh, the, the new dev uh, 
this is what Sergio has written, the, the Spanish guy from Valencia. He wanted to, to write a, a tool, CD toolkit or whatever. It is not finished yet, but he wanted to circumvent this uh, meta packages problem. Have you heard about this? Yeah. And what about task? Um, yeah, um, probably could have done it, but yeah. Um, it's like you tasks are not available with a simple uh, desktop grade, right? No. With that? Desktop grade. Well, we, we actually desktop grade. we have packet lists which generate both meta packages and tasks, and we install using the, using the task code task. And when you upgrade, you will be notified of new packages because the meta, meta packages are also installed, but only with recommends. So it will tell you that these new recommended packages would be or would not be installed depending on their setting. So if you use both of them, you can actually handle both upgrades and not being stuck with upgrade, no installation problem because some packet disappeared from the archive or similar things you will experience with meta packages. So I recommend looking into the DBNU, DBU packet, which is implementing this. And task cell is very, uh, very flexible. We hope to be able to adjust it to combine language specific packages with task specific packages so you get like the Spanish desktop <coughs> packages if you install Spanish desktop. That kind of thing. But we haven't looked into these combinations yet. But I know it's possible because the default devil installer do it. But I really like it how you do it with the task. Could you provide this technique for the other CDDs as well? It is actually. I think, uh, was it you that made the simple, yeah. simple DDD? No, the CDD packet? Yeah, I, I, I will have this invented these CDDs stuff and it's not good. And I wish you could make it better. I know, it's just a question of time because we have continued to develop our tools. Yeah. You have an early fork. Yeah, we I have made a few modifications. I, I didn't want to make it a fork. I wanted to, to present it to you to make it uh, to continue. The yeah, we really wanted to use it, but someone actually had to do the work of yeah. switching our build system to yeah. use it, and no one did that. Yeah. I could do a new fork, but I'm afraid it would be the same. <laughs> well, you have to actually convert the DBNU yeah. packet to use it. Yeah. And if you do it, yeah, yeah, I would like to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would like to. Absolutely. It's, it's after after edge. edge. After edge. For Lenny. For Lenny. I, I just want to, to have a common tool for, for all CDDs to not reinvent the wheel. My intent was to, to, to make it, but I, I was just... Uh, well, yeah, but you have to go all the way. You can't just stop yeah, yeah. outside the door. You have to go inside and fix the furniture. All, all your stuff it, uh, mentions Debian Edo. So I have just to rename your stuff and this would be also a fork. I have no, no tool which I, I can... Well, I you can have to rewrite that. the build system for Debian Edo, the, the Debian Edo packet. Yeah, at I the don't moment want to rebuild it. I w w just want to, to build. Uh, well, someone has to do it. Someone yeah, has to rewrite the build system for DBN EDU packets yeah. to use CDD. Yeah. If not, yeah, it's but, not going to happen. Well, but no, no the, the problem is I just uh, uh, rewrote the DBN EDU package, uh, uh, or I, I was well, able to cre uh, cre create the, the DBN EDU packages at a Formal state, but you uh, developed uh, further and ignored the CDD common package. So, and if I, I try it again, I'm, I'm afraid that you will also ignore it. Well, it will only be ignored if it's not committed to our CVS or subversion. Yeah. So, but you are, I really welcome you to commit a few changes to our CVS and use the new build tool. So, the first thing to do is to ask for commit access. Yeah. Oh, you've got some commit And you're not talking to Peter, so you have to do something. I think you do. So, no, I just. I'm on your behalf. The main thing about Task Cell, in my experience, is lack of documentation. It really needs a good how to do stuff like this. We cleaned up our packet uh, because I by accident discovered that you could do it in much simpler. Instead of having like seven files, you can use one file. And yes. So it would be nice if somebody from the CDD community would, who has gathered that knowledge would put it down. There. <coughs> or on, uh, on, on bits. <laughs> And if any volunteers to do that, I'm more than willing to answer questions about how the details work.
that sitting down and writing a documentation is probably not going to happen on this side of the subject. What's the name of the list? The main list? Even in you, at least, DBNR. <coughs> There's also the DBN CDD. No, DBN custom, at least, DBNR. Which is like a meeting point for all the CDDs, but it's not very active. Uh, this, uh, this list is mostly occupied by external drivers. Yeah. I, I, uh, the, the idea of uh, CDD is to make some, something internal Debian, but the name is really bad chosen. Mm -hmm. Custom Debian distribution sounds like something else. Mm -hmm. we, we should rename it again, but um, if you have hesitated. Do you have a better of also? Uh, unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. But internal has to be inside the name. Debian internal is, has to be inside the name because anybody, uh, uh, anything else is uh, misused. I, I hate the point when we when we change the uh, name into internal Debian Institute or what was internal Debian projects? It was in Oslo. It was formerly uh, internal Debian projects and people mixed it up with te technical projects like X Strike Force and so on. That's why we changed the name and this was a bad move. Was a really bad move, but I have no, no, I'm not good at inventing names. <laughs> and renaming something is even worse because you have to do something. Well, you have to at least get a better name because yeah. uh, adding confusion is not a good thing. Yeah, confusion <laughs> is so sweet. So, if somebody finds a good name here in this room, you are welcome. This would yeah. be a nice, a nice thing and a nice outcome. This I think the time is actually over. Yeah, it is. Yes. And nobody used some nice uh, things to show that. <laughs> okay. So